So I'm, I'm here to talk to you today um, about pedagogy and about uh, transforming learning and all that stuff. No, I'm actually not going to do that with you today. That's what I normally do. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about my personal journey as an apprentice Buddhist monk and as a student of Shakuhachi. And I want to share with you some of my background, some of the intimate things that have gone on in my life that Craig pushed me to be uncomfortable and, and to talk about a little bit, and how it relates to learning for all of us. So I grew up in a small town in the prairies, uh, a really small town. When I say small, I, I mean that there was a welcome to sign that had the name of the town on both sides of it on the highway. It was one of <laughs> those kind of places, about 4,000 people. I learned how to ride a horse before I learned how to ride a bike. And, and for me to have, from a very early age, a very strong connection to Japan and to Japanese culture, it, it, I don't know where it came from. I don't know how that happened growing up on the prairies. But as time went on, and my curiosity and led me to, to be more involved in Japan. Uh, ultimately, I ended up marrying a Japanese girl. And so this is my home. Um, even though I pay my taxes in Canada, this is where I consider my home to be, which is the village of Fukuroda in Daigo, in the Ibaraki prefecture of Japan. It's a very, very, very small place, and I am the only non-Japanese person there, so the kids follow me around the grocery store. <laughs> <laughs> with this terrified look on their face, and it's even worse when I speak Japanese to them, because you know, he actually speaks it. So, so it's a wonderful place. It's a place that, for me, is where I restore. Uh, and, and for me, to be filled, uh, which is what happens uh, from Japan, is what allows me to do the work that I do around the world with so many schools. And, and one of the things that I love uh, about being in Japan is to walk in the bamboo groves uh, in Kyoto. And, Bamboo, somehow it's very, uh, I'm very connected to bamboo. And, you know, bamboo, you can almost watch it grow. It grows so quickly. It's one of the most renewable resources in the world. And, and it, you can feel the life around it. And it, it reaches so straight, so straight to the sky. It just, it's like being around children, you know? You can almost see them reaching for, a, for something. It's, it's, it's really wonderful to be around bamboo. It's very, very special. And, and I remember when I landed in Narita the first time and we're taking the highway, or the, the, the train, I should say, out to her hometown, and it was, it was dusk. It was, I could barely see my first glimpses of Japan, and I, but I could see these little groves of trees growing so straight, and I said, what are those trees that grow so straight? And she looked at me and said, that would be bamboo. <laughs> and you know, growing up on the prairies, my connection to bamboo were those little tiny stakes that held up the tomatoes. I, like, I didn't... I didn't understand that it could actually be something bigger than that. So I guess it's only natural with my love of Japan, my love of music, and, and my connection to, to bamboo that I would study the shakuhachi. And um, I was, I'm really fortunate to have an amazing shakuhachi teacher. He's actually the only uh, grandmaster of both shakuhachi schools outside of Japan. His PhD is in shakuhachi. Uh, he's an amazing, amazing man. He's recorded over 42 albums. And um, <laughs> it goes to show you the importance of asking the question. Because he was willing to take me as a student, and I, I'm almost ashamed by it, you know, because he's such a master. But I asked him, why would you accept me as a student? And he said, because you asked. Because you wanted to learn. He said, I don't differentiate between novice and master. That's not my ego. It's not for me to decide. I'm here for the person that wants to learn. That was my first lesson. My second lesson was this. It's not the flute. <laughs> this was the first five minutes of my first lesson with him. I have to explain the shakuhachi to you. The shakuhachi is actually uh, the root end of bamboo, and you can see around the bottom where the uh, root ball has been cut away. And there's five holes in the shakuhachi. There's four on the front. There's one on the back. It's an incredibly simple instrument. And on the other end is what's called the utaguchi, which is uh, a knife edge, essentially, uh, that is cut. And unlike blowing on a bottle or a, or a flute, playing the shakuhachi means directing a pin stream, and I do mean a pin stream of air, into the utaguchi and splitting it in half. It's like splitting a hair. It's incredibly difficult and incredibly frustrating. Now, unlike playing, I, I play many instruments, unlike playing the piano or guitar, anybody can make a sound really, really easily. You know, the youngest child can make a sound on, on a piano. Some people take weeks or even months to get a sound out of a shakuhachi. And so my first lesson, he took the shakuhachi from me, 
And he said, may I, may I play your shakuhachi? I said, please. And he inspected it, he looked it over, and then he started to play, and it was amazing. And he played for a few minutes, and he looked at it again, and he handed it back to me, and he said, well, we know one thing. I said, what's that? He said, it's not the flute. <laughs> I said, I said what, what exactly do you mean? He said, what I mean is that you will begin to obsess, and you will want to change things, and as you struggle, as a student, you're going to want to change. The udikuchi is not sharp enough. The holes are bored wrong. The edge isn't polished correctly. There's something wrong with the flute. And he said, I want you to remember this moment because it's not the flute. <laughs> you see, we look so quickly. When I ask people, what do you want teaching and learning and assessment to look like? Well, I know what I want, but you know, we have all this curriculum and we've got this new curriculum. Oh my goodness. Yes, but what do you want it to look like? Well, I know what I want it to look like, but we don't have enough time for what I want. Yes, but what do you want it to look like? Well, we don't have enough money. You know, I'd like to reconfigure my... Yes, but what do you want it... And then there's the administration, and then there's the timetable, and we surrender our power to everything that is outside of us. And the one thing we have control over ourselves, we give away. What do you want it to look like? What is the wish in your heart? What do you want teaching and learning and assessment to look like? It's not the flute. And only when we have gone through every possibility in our own lives, only when we have affected everything within ourselves, and there is nothing left that can change, nothing left that can shift, then we can look for the external source. Otherwise, we surrender our power. So please remember, <laughs> it's not the flute. <laughs> as hard a lesson as it was for me. The second is, there is only sound. Mm, this was interesting. So many of us are familiar with Western notation. Right? I think everybody could actually sing this song, probably just looking at it. We, we know what it is. We, we understand Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And it's in standard time. So there's four beats per measure. And it's in the key of C. And it's very straightforward. It's like math. There's, it's, it, it's, it's really, there's only one way to do this, only one way to play this. So when I came across the notation for shakuhachi, I, I thought, well, this should be really easy. There's only five holes on a shakuhachi. It can't be that difficult. So this is shakuhachi notation. <laughs> it's very disturbing. Uh, we read it from the right to the left and from the top to the bottom. Now, there's, there's some things that I want to point out. There are no bars. So there is no indication of how long a note should be. There is no key signature. There is no time signature. And as my sensei pointed out to me, when you take all that away, all that's left is the sound. All that's left is the sound. And we learn shakuhachi sitting in seiza in front of each other, and a master will give you some idea what it should sound like, because although there's only five holes on a shakuhachi, depending on the angle that you hold it to your mouth, the mary and the carry, depending on your fingering, which can be on, a quarter off, an eighth off, a half off, three quarters off, to the side or to the front, depending on all these combinations, you can recreate any sound that the human voice can make with a shakuhachi. So there's many, many fingerings for exactly the same note. It's incredibly complex, and it looks so easy. <laughs> right? But in the end, there's only the sound. So when we take away all of the other things that are our distractions, the teaching and the learning and all of that stuff, when, we, when all we're left with is the sound, the impact we make in the world, the rest of it is superfluous. So what sound do you leave? What sound do you give? What do your students take? What is the sound you leave in the world? The third is to breathe with all life. The shakuhachi is a form of meditation, a form of prayer. Actually, the Kosomo monks used to do this instead of chanting sutra. And there are days, instead of chanting sutra, it's so much nicer to play the shakuhachi. And there's days, believe me, that chanting sutra is so much easier than playing the shakuhachi. Because it is about unifying with life. And you know, when, when we, even the Apple Watch now uh, teaches us how to breathe, 
And there's such a focus on mindfulness in schools. Now I find so often I'm being asked to talk about mindfulness, to talk about meditation, to talk about other things other than just curriculum. Breath is so important. And you know, when, when most people learn to play an instrument, you see them with, you know, with a trombone or a trumpet or something, like that, trying to get the sound out. And of course, this is what I did the first time that I played the shakuhachi, was to try to force the sound. And the sensei reaches across, he goes, do, 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 do. He said, please don't. So I, I said, what? He said, a breath is a life. It has a beginning. It has an end. Why would you cut the life off? Breathe. It's so important to breathe. We don't know how to breathe. We have so much tension that it prevents us from breathing. Let's, let's breathe a little bit. If you close your thumb inside of your fist and then try to breathe, go ahead, close your thumbs in your fist, try to breathe. It's really strained. Now open your thumb out and now breathe. It's much easier because the lung meridian runs down the thumb. This is why we connect the lung meridian to the kidney meridian and breathe. Now breathe again. So much easier. But we constrain our breathing, even breathing out. <sighs> you know, we force it out. Let it fall out of you. Let your breath fall. This is the way that shakuhachi is played by breathing out constantly as this little pin stream. That's why it is a connection to all life. When you come back to your breathing, when you come back to your center, you're able to see all kinds of possibilities. So when you struggle, when you're stressed, when the new curriculum, oh, don't say that word. <laughs> right? Come back to your breath, because you cannot speak and listen at the same time in the same way your ego cannot be triggered and you cannot think at the same time. Come back to your breath, and from there you can find your center and find a way around. The next is the most confronting for me. It's always perfect. Let me explain. This is Enso. Enso is a Zen Buddhist practice of drawing a circle in one brush stroke. The paint goes into the brush, you focus, you center, and you draw a circle and then instantly you start to judge. It's not round enough. The ink isn't smooth enough. It's the deficit mentality. It's what assessment is. Assessment isn't a celebration of learning. It's an examination of what's wrong. It should be a celebration. The practice of the Enso is the same reason that we don't cut off the breath in the shakuhachi, because no life was born wrong. Everything is perfect. Yes, but it didn't sound the way I wanted it to sound. In that moment, it was perfect. If you play and no sound comes out, in that moment, it was 100% of what was possible. It was perfect. We judge so quickly. So quickly. And when we wait for every moment, oh, I wonder what this speaker will be like. I wonder how this student will do. Well, what's this guy going to do? Is he going to cut me off? When we live life anticipating judgment, we don't have any possibility for future. Sitting watching The Lord of the Rings for the millionth time with my wife, there is the scene, you know, Gandalf, you shall not pass, right? And down comes the staff, and, and I'm like, wow, what is this pain? Oh my goodness, okay, her claws are in my arms. So pause, right, pause. Honey, honey, it's okay. You know, Gandalf's going to fall, but he's going to come back in the next movie. <laughs> We've seen this a lot, right? And she looked at me and she said, you don't know that. I said, what do you mean you don't know that? Maybe this time he's going to make it. And at first I thought, are you nuts? And then, and then I thought about it, I thought, why do I live so certain of what's going to happen? Why do I judge not only the past but the future? Maybe he will make it this time. Why can't I have the excitement again? Because we don't know what the future is. You don't know what that child is going, how he's going to perform. We don't actually know anything. 
So let's not judge. Let's live with the assumption that everything is perfect. Everything was exactly the way it was supposed to be and anticipate the bright future. The last is the key always speaks truth. The key is what we refer to. In, in, in Japanese, the word key is everywhere in the language. Genki desu ka, you know. It's, it's so everywhere, and key means life. And so for Japanese people, it's very much part of the culture that everything has life, that we connect to each other through life. We sit in what's called our key body that surrounds us by a couple of feet. When you're sitting and breathing still, if you focus and center your mind, you actually can feel the person sitting next to you because you're sitting in their key body. And perhaps you can smell their key body. <laughs> right? We sit in each other's energy. We communicate. Everything is communicated this way. The shakuhachi doesn't lie, and it doesn't judge. It only reflects the sound. And it's a perfect mirror and reflection for what my heart state is. So there are days that it sounds amazing. There are days that it doesn't sound good. And I have to say, it's not the flute, but it was perfect. So what's going on? And your key, no matter what you try to not say, we are all connected. We all feel each other's sufferings. We all feel each other's joy. And we all affect each other in our conversations, in our work, in our way of doing everything. The key doesn't lie, the key is truth, and we cannot hide from it. So look at your work, look at your life, look at how you prepare food, look at how you present food. What are you saying? Where is your heart state? Because that is what you share to others. In the end, there is only sound. So these are the five lessons representing the five holes from the shakuhachi for me. It's not the flute. There's only sound. Breathe with all life. It's always perfect. And the key always speaks the truth. Now, if you're curious what it sounds like, you won't find out from me. <laughs> because that would take away from your journey. And it's my journey. So I share these lessons with you, and I encourage you to find your flute, to find your way, and to thank you for your care of our children, because although they are a small percentage of our population, they are 100% of our future, and you are the most important professionals in the world. So please, share the best sound you can with them. Thank you. Thank you.